Hello everyone, welcome to this special edition of CGTN. We're broadcasting live in Northwest China's Xinjiang region. It's such a beautiful sight over here. And let me brief you what we're going to do in the next 30 days. And this is a special program called Amazing Xinjiang. In the next 30 days, CGTN crew will be zipping through the whole Xinjiang region, which covers around one sixth of China's landmass. So that will be a gigantic trip. And today, this is the starting point. Also, I'd like to call it the D-Day of this mammoth trip. Of course, I'm not alone from the very beginning. And now let me introduce you to my friend here, Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu, welcome to our program. Hello, how are you? Would you like to say hi to our viewers around the world here? Hello, I will do <laughs> That's lovely. So tell me something about yourself. Can you tell us about yourself? Very simple. So Mr. Yu is the uh, vice is the uh, manager, uh, vice manager of this uh, whole park, right? So this is such a beautiful site every year around this time. And it is getting a little bit chilly, I have to say that for all of our friends around the world. Actually, I've definitely felt the uh, temperature difference here in Xinjiang. So it's really, really cold in mornings and evenings. Yesterday it was scorching hot, but today it's freezing cold actually, it's chilly. So what do you have to say? Yeah, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to So the temperature difference is very big, right? And that especially here in the valley, of course. And now I know every year when it comes to this time, this is the autumn now in northern Xinjiang and the Weather is a little bit whimsical, I would like to say. It's a freezing cold in mornings and evenings, right? And now, let, tell me something about this river. I know we started from here. It's such a beautiful river. It is emerald green. This is the first time for me to see such a sight. So this is the Urtis River, right? In English, and that it means the torrent. Let me uh, probably let me interrupt you here. I think I will have encountered some unexpected friends here, the ghosts. So every year when it comes to this season, there will be tons of ghosts and cows and sometimes the camels walking this way, right? 每年的时候都会有很多的这个羊啊从这个我们这里叫交通要道从这里穿过我们景区这个道路呢也是牧民专长的牧道牧道景区里面山里面是牧民的下牧场你像现在下雨山里面就是下雪嘛所以这是一个
So we look at the bottoms of these animals. If the animals, if the uh, bottoms are moving oh. vertically up and down, and that is a male, right? So horizontally from left to right, or right to left, and that is a, a female, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think they have passed us, right? And that one is uh, falling over. That is, uh, I've never seen this before. Okay, so this is the uh, culture here. I know in this place, around this region, uh, Kazakhs people actually take up around 70% of the total population here. And this is part of their culture. Okay, that is lovely. I've seen some. So every year around this time, there will be tourists, right? There will be tourists around here. Every year, 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 there will be tourists around here. I know that it is getting really cold and also because of COVID-19, now the tourism was affected, but it is recovering gradually. Okay. It is recovering gradually. And now every year around this time, there were tons of tourism from all around China. And some of them have already come here, I think, Maybe let me talk to one of them here, over there. Okay. Actually, yesterday I was here, not many people, but today we have bumped into some tourists. Probably let me try my luck and talk to them how they feel about this site over here. Hi. Hi, hello. Yeah, we are from CGTN. We are CGTN. Can you see us on CGTN? <laughs> Would you like to say hi? Do you speak English? Can you speak English? Um, Would you like to say hi to our viewers around the world here? Hello. 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 The lockdown was lifted uh, across the Xinjiang region. So she is actually a local and they went to Kanas, a little bit to the north of the Kakutokai. It's such a beautiful sight over here. And then how do you feel the view now? Every year, you are the local people, so this is the most beautiful time, right? Yes, yes. We have the winter of the winter. I think it's the winter of the winter. That is lovely. So every year when it comes to autumn, you see a myriad of different colors in the mountains and also... Yeah, it's a little bit chilly though. You have a little bit of cold, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, she was telling me that yeah, the air is so good, the quality is superb. Now we see some camels over here, horses. Yes, that is lovely. And here, actually, in English, or in the local language, they call it the transition. You see a cat over here and a camel. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. That is lovely. This is such a rare sight, actually. You see the uh, Kazakhs, local Kazakhs moving their homes, right? The camels. They are the local Kazakhs using this cart to travel. Yes. They are using the cart to travel. Yes. They are using the cart to travel. Yes. They are using the cart to travel. Ah. So those are actually all of their belongings. If you turn the cameras around, they are walking away, and the dog is following over there. That's such a, that is so lovely. It's beautiful. Okay, so Mr. Yu Yu 老师呢，这里边我们在这个阿尔泰山，其实最好看的一个点就是我们现在能够看到的这座山，是吧？
And this is the uh, most beautiful site here actually in Altai Mountain. It's called Holy Peak Mountain, Holy Bell Peak. As the name suggests, it's very much like a bell sitting there. So, it's called Shenzhongshan. We call it Shenzhongshan. So it's the whole mountain of Fagang Yan Dimo. Okay. So it's the whole mountain of Fagang Yan Dimo. So it is the the mass actually. The land mass is granite. Yes. Okay. It's a slightly higher than 365 meters. Okay. So its relative height is around 365 meters. Yes. It's a slightly higher than 365 meters. Yes. Okay. So according to the local culture, it stands for 365 days. In a year, right? Yeah. And what, what does it mean actually? 365, it's just probably a coincidence. That could not just be a chance. Uh, absolutely is a chance. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just 365 days. We, 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 Like a poem, probably in the local language, right? If you travel here, and then you would have the bless, you would have the blessing from the holy belt peak, all through your life, right? Yeah. So if we turn the camera around, I think we have uh, met another batch of guests over here. More ghosts are coming all this way, and this is what I said just now. They call it transition every year around this time, right? They need to move all of the uh, goats. And also horses from one pasture to another. But 每年的话都是从另一个场转到另一个场。每年从山里面，啊，山里面，它到这个季节山里面冷了，它就开始回冬牧场。Probably I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna stop talking a little bit so that our viewers can enjoy this very rare sight. So the goats are running around. 而且你看现在的羊嘛，非常肥，山里面草草好嘛。嗯哼。That is lovely. Okay, I I I I forgot one question over here. Yu 老师，我们这边有一个问题啊，是从我们的央视频上来的，这是蓉蓉。他说新疆现在去玩疫情管控还和以前一样严吗？需要层层安检吗？现在不严了啊！现在因为新疆前几天已经所有的确诊患者都清零了嘛，清零了。新疆规定，来不需要核酸检测报告，只需要出示。那个绿码，绿码还有测体温。Oh, that is lovely. Okay, that is for Rong Rong. Now it's getting easier, but still quite a strict measures are in place because they just arrived in Xinjiang a couple of days ago, and then you don't need to do the nuclear acid test. I mean, across the Xinjiang, but probably for some particular regions, that depends on where you go. So it is getting much easier. I know on the 7th September, the last patient was discharged from hospital only three days ago. Now it's getting easier to go around. In the Xinjiang region, and another question I have got from Han Ling Guozhu. He says, "I want to know how many years of snow will remain when the mountains, I mean, this whole area will be sealed off." Uh, we are basically, uh, forgot until until the end of the year. So the high season will be wouldn't. So the high season will be from now to the end of October, right? Yes. Okay. 到了十月底，十一从十一月份开始，我们就进入冬季旅游啊哈啊，赏冰雪嘛。Okay. Ah.、Uh. So start in November, that will be the winter season, another high season probably. 那那个时候，他说这个什么时候封山？会不会封山？呃，我们我们景区呢，一年四季不封山。一年四季是不？哎、啊，我们景区是一年四季开开放的啊。那这个我们回答了这个翰林阁主的问题啊。他说几月封山？他一年四季都不封山呢。So it is open all year round. It's never closed off. 嗯，当然封山还有一个含义是啥？就是嗯，山里面，嗯，因为因为现在你看转场转出来，山里面就封掉了，下大雪了嘛。哦。但是景区还可以，它是可以进的。OK， 它可以进入。Okay, so, so probably some of the pastures will be closed off because there's a snow is a lot, so it's dangerous. But for all of this park, this area, it is never closed off; it is open all year round. I think, I hope that I have got the,、uh, I've answered your questions. And of course, for those who just join us, this is CGTN, and we're broadcasting live in Northwest China's Xinjiang. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below on Facebook or Twitter and our Weibo. And then, of course, in the next thirty days, we are going to present you the、uh, a diverse Xinjiang with these cultures, its ethnic groups, and everything. If you have any questions, please leave your comments. We'll get back to your questions as soon as possible. Okay. 
So if you turn the cameras around, I know, and that is the、uh, Holy Belt Peak, and we talk, talk about that just now. 刚才我们讲过了这个 and this is very much like a valley, right? And then if you turn the camera to the left, 如果我们把这个镜头转向左边呢，然后我们是可以看到那边是也有是层峦叠翠，是不同种类的山，它都是花岗岩，是吧？全都是花岗岩地貌。Uh, 我们现在对面看到的一个。Uh, 它一个一个坑一个坑的嘛。Okay. Uh. So in our camera, hopefully that you can see it. If we zoom in a little bit, so that you can see over there that mountain on the side of it, we can see many of the、uh, little caves that are pockmarked with caves over there. We can see the black marks. 它那个黑色的颜色是什么呢？黑色的颜色是流水，啊哈，水湿、浸湿、浸湿的。啊，从上面本身岩石有别的元素啊,啊，水流以后。So every year when the water or probably the rainwater trickles down, and then because of weathering, we can see all of the marks of there all around the surface of that mountain, right? Okay. 它这个相当于也是一种就是风化现象。一种风化现象，我们我们叫它就你看一个一个还像佛佛龛嘛，我们叫它花岗岩佛龛地貌啊。Okay. So. So if if we can see that to our viewers around the world, so you can see the caves, or we call it the marks over there. It is very much like tons of shrines over there. So that is why we call it the landscape. This kind of landscape, the shrine landscape over there, right? Okay, that is lovely. It's such a beautiful sight over there, and it is it's raining now. It's getting really cold. And yesterday we came here. It was really sunny, scorching hot. But now the weather has changed. I think it is autumn. 是用秋天的时候，这个季节变换比较快。对，而且现在你像今天下雨吧，嗯，明天有可能那颜色比今天还漂亮。Also the colors will be changing, right? By the day, yeah. 而且呢，现在我们仅仅看到了我们是我们神农山这一个主景点，啊、uh, ，我们顺着顺着峡谷往里走呢， okay. 才是我们的景区的、uh, 呃核心核心景区。So this is only part of it, right? I know Holy Bell Peak is the most famous, so that's why. Most people would come over here, right? But if we're going to a little bit more, we're going to see more. I know there are all kinds of other peaks over there. If we're going a little bit further, okay, that is lovely. It's going to be a, such a beautiful sight over there. Okay, I think I'm going to end this part from here. That is such a beautiful sight. It's raining over there. Thank you very much for the umbrella. And then I saw the、uh, tr- as they call it the transition, very much like the migration, all of the goats from one pasture. For another, and the weather is changing so fast. Yesterday it was really sunny, scorching hot, but today it is a freezing cold. And we have also learned something about the bell, about the bell peak, holy bell peak, and also the beautiful river flowing down there. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time, of course. And of course, this is not only me. I have my colleagues standing by in different locations, actually around this area. Now, let me.、Uh, Uh, let me give the, my floor and yield my floor to my colleague Dongxue, who is now in、uh, the county right now in the township. So Dongxue, take away. Try tell us what you have over there. Thanks, Xianhua. Again, welcome to CGTN live streaming across Xinjiang. Yep, we are in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. I'm Serena with CGTN. So right now, I am standing at Fuyun County. You know, my colleagues before have been showed you guys this beautiful, stunning natural sceneries in this county. So most of you might not have heard this Fuyun County before. So a bit. Background information of this small town lies in Altai region. So Fuyun County is comprised of 29 different ethnic minorities, including the Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Mongol, and Mongolians. Where I am standing now is in the downtown downtown of this small town. As you can see, right now it's a, 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 around 11,、uh, around 12 o'clock, I think. So you can see traffic is. Moving, and you can see all the stores have been opening up. You know, people are just gradually getting back to their normal life after fighting with the COVID-19 pandemic. So today, I'm here to show you around this small 
count, small county, this small town lies、uh, in the west, in the north of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. And also, I'm lucky to invite one of the guests, one of my guests. He is a local Kazakh soccer coach, and his name is Akhe Jiang. Hello, Akhe Jiang. Hello, Nihao. 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 欢迎，感谢您来到我们的 CGTN 的直播。先跟我们的观众网友们打个招呼好吗？大家好，非常荣幸来到我们央视直播。Hi everyone, I'm so honored to be here with you guys. So, 你可以给大家一些简短的啊，简自我介绍一下吧，先。好的，我叫阿克江，我是福音县一体小组足球教练。啊、呃，我在这里生活了三十二年，我是非常热爱的我们的家乡，我们家乡是非常的美丽。那我现在所处的位置是我们飞县的世贸中心，我们的身后就是我们的金河广场，我们飞县老百姓就在这里经常买我们的生活日常用品，是非常的方便。Nice. So, uh, as I mentioned before, Arthur John has、uh, he is raised up here in Fuyin County, and he's now he has been living here for 32 years. He is a Kazakh. Soccer coach、uh, in the high school here. So、uh, he just mentioned that we are now standing at the downtown of this small town, and right behind us is one of the most, one of the biggest shopping malls here. And you know they would always go shopping in that shopping in, in that mall. Okay, let's just go walk and and talk. So um, I, 我刚才我有呃那个注意到哈，咱们这左手边的一一片就是非常有异域。风情的建筑哈，您可以简单的给我们介绍一下这些这些建筑吗？好的，好的。我们现在所处的这个街道是我们分县的主街道。嗯。我们看到街道周围这个，我们这些建筑呢，就是近几年打造、重新装修的俄罗斯风格，啊、非常的漂亮。啊。啊 as as you guys can see on my left hand side, all these exotic buildings. It looks like it looks very exotic, very Euro European style. And as Akajan just mentioned, these are all renovated in just in last a couple of years. And now let's just stepping on this small van, a small car. We're gonna heading to the river. 那我们先上车吧。嗯。All right. Let's go. So we're now on this uh small uh small car. We're heading to the Irtish River, which we call in Urartsikhe in Chinese. 我们现在呢是在往额尔齐斯河的这个路上出发哈 As as you can see, Axel is wearing uh it's um very traditional um custom customized um outfit for a Kazakh. Why don't we have him to do a little bit introduction of he what he is wearing today? 那您可以给我们的网友们大大致的介绍一下，您今天穿的这套民族服饰有什么特色吗？我们我们哈萨克民族是马背民族，我们是草原民族，我们是非常热情好客的民族。那我现在穿的衣服就是哈萨克服饰，我们这个服饰上的这些花纹呢，就代表着我们哈萨克民族在草原上的这个畜牧生活的特征。So as as Akajang mentioned before, so he is from he is a Kazakh. You know the Kazakh ethnic group group is what we call the people growing on the horseback, meaning you know they are horsing horsing ride in the ancient times or in back in in his grand grandpa grandpa's generation. So all his costume, all his you new know, outfit, you can see this very brightly shining colors are. The grasslands, and 那你可以给我讲，就是像您这样的，就少数民族的服饰，一般是在什么样的时候会穿到呢？呃，我们平时都在这个婚礼，或者是节日庆典，还有我们的篝火晚会，还有我们的这个呃阿肯弹唱会的时候，穿上我们的民族服饰来展现我们的。So usually they will they will wear this, you know, um. Ethnic、um, outfits during very special festivals. For example, for example, you know the um very traditional、uh, festivals. You can say, say, say. You, 刚才那提的那几个节日吗？还有库尔班节、鲁、嗯、节、阿肯弹唱会。阿肯弹唱会。哦，阿肯弹唱会，您先那个大致给我们介绍一下。好的，阿肯弹唱会是我们哈萨克民族的。嗯场非常盛大的一场聚会，一场盛宴。嗯，我们哈萨克民族呢，在阿肯弹唱会聚聚在一起，我们阿肯弹唱，一起唱歌，一起跳舞，载歌载舞，还要举办我们的这个呃篮球比赛、摔跤比赛，还
还有我们的这个传统的项目有雕羊、姑娘追之类的。So Akazan mentioned that you know they will they usually wear this、um, ethnic outfits during very important or very cultural festivities. In for for example, he mentioned this Akan Tan Chang Hui. Well, in the sim in simple words, you can you can think of this Akan Tan Chang Hui as a social gatherings. You know, all these、um, ethnic minority group minority group people. So they will gather together. You know, they they will dance. They will go singing, go dancing, and then you know just talk to friends and rel and families and relatives, and you know just like a social event. Okay, so here we just arrived by the side of the Etish River. Let's just get off the car. And then now you can see on my left hand side. 我们的摄像老师可以把那个画面交到左边去 On my left hand side, it where is the famous Itish River. It's the this is the only river that flows through the Arctic Arctic Ocean. So, 那你啊，我们现在是来到了这个鄂尔齐斯河旁边哈。然后您可以大概给我们介绍一下这个鄂尔齐斯河有什么有趣的故事故事可以分享的。好的，我们鄂尔齐斯河是我们。全国唯一一条流入北冰洋的河流，嗯哼，啊，它经过我们中国，经过哈萨克斯坦、俄罗斯，最后流入北冰洋，呃，也是我们新疆第二大河。Okay, so, uh, Irtysh River is one is the second largest river in Xinjiang. Of,、uh, of course, the first one is the Yili River. So it flows through. Kazakhstan, and then Fuyun County is where we are right now, and then goes all the way to the Arctic Ocean. Um, 我看到哈，这这我们现在在这个感觉像是一个城市的一个小广场一样，依伴依伴着咱们的这个鄂尔齐斯河哈，这一片感觉这风景都还挺漂亮的。我刚才有看到有行人，有那个当地的居民啊，在这儿跑步啊，在这儿散步啊什么的。对对。您平时也会在这儿散散步啊什么的。我们平时就早上起来在这晨跑呀，晚上吃完饭以后就散散步，消化一下这个。<笑> so, uh, right now this looks like a square, you know, like a city, like a city square or like a town square. You can see, um, by just by the Edith River, you can see this, um, uh, the square, you know, just like a.、Uh, Flushed with all these trees and very greenery, greenery sceneries. Well, because of its, you know, it's it's about get to lunch time here in、uh, local in Fu Fuyun County. So you won't see a lot of people here. But at but usually at night you will see people, you know, do go square dance, square dancing, and they just just walk by the rivers in just like you know killing times. Ah,、uh, 那您就是我。咱们这片城市，这个感觉是像一个小花园似的。这个地方以前就一直就这么绿化这么茂盛啊，是这个样子的吗？以前不是这样的，我们最近几年，呃，绿化以后，真的变得非常的美丽。以前这个我们河畔周围都是呃荒土，然后这几年规划以后，规划的特别漂亮，现在成为我们宾县的著名的我们的三 A 级景区——滨河景区。嗯哼 ，So basically, once this is the, Here is the barren region, basically nothing. So we just, people here, um, in Fuyun County, just like is created from scratch to to this. You know, you can see this greenery, um, uh, scenery views here. So um, uh, on the other side of that river, 在河的对面，也就是咱们平时就是咱们富裕县的一些居住区了，是吧？对对。您作为一个那个足球教练，平时会带小带学生们或者带小朋友们在这儿练球啊什么的吗？对，我们经常周末的时候就带上我的队员，因为我们的平底山上面绿化的非常漂亮，嗯、我们就经常往山上跑。就是练我们的拉练我们的体力啊、mm-hmm. oh, ，OK。As I mentioned before, Akjang is a soccer、um, coach. So what he told me is like usually he would take his、um, uh, students or buddies here to get some training as well. You know, OK. So I think that is all for the introduction of this Fuyun County. We have more coming up. Stay tuned. And then one of my colleagues is standing by on the other side of Koko Tohai. Let's give it to her.
结束了，没结没结没结，还没结。没结。Well, thanks for my colleagues Jianhua and Dongxue. I'm the third part of this live streaming. I'm reporter He Weiwei. Thank you for watching. Now you're watching CGTN live streaming of our special coverage in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in China. This trip is named Amazing Xinjiang. And I am now at the spot that we're going to do a live coverage here. This is the opening coverage of our trip. As you can see, the unique landscape here, and actually this is a mine vein. This place is called Koktoke. Koktoke. It's located in the northern part of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in the Altai region. And if you know something about Xinjiang, you must know that the Altai region is very symbolic. It has very diversified landscapes. It has, for example, mountains, it has forests, it has rivers. And also here we have a mine, mining way here, mining fields. So what is special about these mining fields. I'll give you a brief introduction here. And actually, this place, um, I think some 30 years ago, this place, we couldn't find it on the map. But actually, it existed uh, since 1930s, when uh, mineral resources were found in this area. And actually, it has abundant resources of minerals. And since then, the mining operation started, the, the workers started to extract the, the, the minerals here. And then, in 1950s, this mining, because it used to be a cooperation project between uh, China and the Soviet Union, and after 1945, when the uh, People's Republic of China was established, and then it was a collaboration project for uh, several years. And then in 1950s, this whole project was uh, entirely owned by China. And actually, this uh, mining vein, we can have a look at here. Uh, it, it's, it's dubbed as a uh, uh, museum for minerals because it has abundant resources. And now we know that um, in the world now we have about 140 kinds of minerals. And in this main, in this single vein, mine vein, uh, we have 86 of them and actually 26 of them are uh, rare minerals, rare metal. And you know, in China, in the year 1964, China's first atomic bomb detonated. And then three years later, China's first hydrogen bomb. And another three years later, China launched its first man-made satellite. And all the rare metals that are used in these bombs and satellites all came from this mining vein. So for China, it has a special meaning. And as I just mentioned, uh, we couldn't find it on the map before 19, 1990s because, uh, because the, uh, uh, the, the minerals were used for aerospace industry, so it's kind of uh, uh, confidential. But now uh, this area has become a public area. As it has become a, uh, a geopark, actually. And now our reporting crew is down there. They are preparing for the live coverage for our CGTN program, Global Watch, starts at 4 GMT. So I'm going to take you for a closer look at their uh, preparation over there. 
And for those who just tuned in, just remind you that you are watching CGTN live streaming of our special coverage of Xinjiang. And today is the first day of our special coverage. And we have a lot of people here. We have 70 people of our uh, uh, reporting crew. And we are going to drive along Xinjiang from north, from the Elta region that I am now at from the north and then down to the south. We will see mountains, we will see uh, forests, we will see Gobi deserts, and we also will taste a lot of Xinjiang cuisines. And this trip will take one month and we will cover about 8,000 kilometers. Now we are walking inside this geopark. As I just mentioned, this place, this little town is called Koktuke. And actually in, in Mandarin, in Chinese Mandarin, it's called Ke Ke Tuo Hai. But Koktuke is local language here. Uh, so uh, the same pronunciation also, uh, is for Kazakh language and also Mongolian language. In Kazakh language, Koktuke means green forests. Uh, uh, in the Mongolian language, Koktuke means Blue River. And I think my colleague Jianhua just now just show you how, uh, what it's like about the green forests and the Blue River. So it has very diversified uh, landscape here in this region. Okay, now we're getting closer to this vein. Over there, you can see a little house there. Our director is working inside there, and we have two cars. And actually, that is uh, our car. As I just mentioned, we will travel across the Xinjiang region by cars. Uh, we have, this time we have 20 cars. It's really a big reporting crew. And just to remind you, we're doing live streaming of this uh, live coverage on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. So if you have any comments, if you anything you want to know, just leave your comments and I will try to answer you. Yes, and yes, we are here at our preparation spot. As you can see, this is our car. We have our logo here, Amazing Xinjiang. For the following days, we're going to take this car to drive from Xinjiang from north to the south. And we have uh, different cameras here. For example, one cameraman is over there. And later in our live show, we, you will see their live coverage. And let's see down there. Okay. Okay. Over there, can you see some people there? Why? Like, uh, yeah, this area, right? Uh, actually, that is my colleague's, my colleague Tang Bo will host the live coverage here near the Cocteau K number three mine vein. Hey, you see me, right? Hey, how's there? It's really cool because, you know, I haven't been to a mine vein before. Yeah, you get ready for your show. What? Are you ready for your show? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit far. Maybe later we'll I'll take you uh, to get to to to, to talk a little bit to Tambo. But first, can we just look at our behind the scenes stories? Okay. This little house. Okay. So guys, what we're doing here, we have our colleagues here. This is our gear. Okay, okay. We have a drone here, so later the drone will uh, depart from here and then fly to that direction. 
our drone operators will uh, be here, working here. 什么时候？早上什么时候过来准备的？十点半出发，十点半，十点半。Okay, they, uh, they came here about two hours ago for preparations. And actually, this, this little house, as you can see, is it, it's it's a cable. Actually, this area, as I just mentioned, it used to be a mine vein, but now uh, the mining operation, uh. They, there is no more mining operation here, so this place has been transformed into a drill park. So the tourists can take a, a cable from here to to that top of the mountain. Okay, well, let's take a look over there. 我们去别的地方看一下吧。那祝你们等一下直播顺利哦，<laughs> 等着看你们的节目。Waiting, looking forward to their show. I'm taking you down there. Okay. This is uh, Ju 老师 Ju 老师 Master Ju <laughs> is in charge of our show. Uh, Ju 老师，我们现在都准备的和怎么样了？我们已经准备好了。嗯、mm, ，就等一会儿直播了。Okay, we're totally get ready because today, a uh, when we came here this morning, it actually rained a lot. 就今天早上下雨了，其实对，今天早上下雨，然后我们赶紧的把这机器， mm. 你看都给。Yeah. yeah, we covered uh, our camera with the, the plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now the, the rain just uh, uh, stopped a few minutes ago, so I think we're lucky enough. We're good, we're good. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, OK, the third one is the drone, the drone. Yeah, 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 some time before the, 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 our TV live show starts, because, uh, so I want to, I'm not sure whether, it's, whether I can go down there, because you can see the road is really long. It has trees and turns. Maybe we have to hurry up. You know, this area, you can see the, the rocks and the mines. And actually, you know, if you walk here under the sunlight, Actually, uh, for example, yesterday w when I was here, I saw some something, you know, twinkled under the sunlight, and some workers told me that um, you can find some some minerals right everywhere. It's everywhere. And just to give you a brief introduction of this mine vein. As I just mentioned, it has abundant mineral resources, and we look at this, this, this mountain. We look at 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 this mountain. We look it's the minerals, and the black part is just the soil and rock. So when the the mining operation is mainly based on the grade part, I think we need to hurry up. We must go quicker. I hope they will wait. They will just be broadcasting. And you you can also see something like a lake over there. Can you see that lake? Can you see that lake? The water. Actually, it's not a lake. It's water from a river nearby called 
Irtysh River, because the surface, the、uh, should be the bottom, the bottom of this pit is lower than the surface of the river, so the water keeps coming out, keeps coming up. So we also have, uh, uh, pumps. You have to pump the water, keep pumping the water. Otherwise, this whole pit will be filled with water. It's September here,、uh, but now it, it, the, the weather here it's getting、uh, cold. You know,、uh, we came here about one month ago. At that time, it was really、uh, like summer time. It's really hot. But just、uh, one month later, well, other parts of China are still summer days, and here I feel like it's winter. It's it's freezing, especially. About half an hour ago, it rained, so it's really freezing. But now, the rain stopped. It's just getting better. Okay. Can you see them over there? So they are in there. No, a little far. For those who just tuned in, just to remind you, you are watching CGTN live streaming of our special coverage of Xinjiang, and I am reporter He Wei Wei. We're doing this live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, as well as our、uh, CGTN website. If you have any comments. You have any questions? Anything you want to know about this area, about our trip, about our behind-the-scenes stories? You can leave your comments, and I will try to answer you. And this is today is actually the first day of our trip. It's、uh, in the Elta region. So after this live stream, we will drive the car towards the north. To another symbolic spot in Xinjiang, scenic spot called Canas. It's famous for its beautiful landscape and scenery. It's dubbed as the Switzerland in China. So, if you're interested, please stay tuned for our coverage tomorrow. We are walking along the mine vein here. We have different、uh, plants here, but they are all dry, I think. And also, we can see a lot of rocks on this on the ground. 地上可以看到很多的石头 Some worker told me before that some of those rocks. They have mineral resources inside them. Okay, I think we are getting closer. What's this? This is very special. Looks special. This plant. Okay, my colleagues are preparing for their life. Tambo. They're testing. Signals with our studio in Beijing. It's our 
two of our colleagues, Piao Yanzidi. They will be following Tangbo do this live stream. And you also see we have two special guests here. And actually, they're Hello, welcome back. You are watching CGT and live streaming of our special coverage of Xinjiang. I'm now showing you behind the scenes stories. My colleague Tang Bo, he will host a live section, live coverage section of this uh, coverage. So they are now testing signal with our studio in Beijing headquarter of CGTN. And I just walking from up there and through all the way through all the roads down there. Now we are showing you, you're seeing the number three mine vein in the cocktail key. You can see the water here, right? The, uh, yeah, here, the water. Why there is water? I just mentioned because the water here, it's uh, the, 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 the whole pit is about. 250 meters deep so these uh, the, 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 the bottom of the pit should be actually it's lower than the surface of the river and the river the surface is about here so the water keeps coming up so we have to pump the water out so over there you can see some little houses some red little houses actually uh, they are water pumpers they keep working to pump the work that out otherwise this whole uh, pit will be filled with water and you can see the the color of the water it's green right yesterday the worker told me the staff here told me that a lot of tourists uh, ask them uh, that the weather is green is it because they have uh, uh, minerals inside but actually it's not it's not because the minerals but because of the refraction of the sunlight just like what you can see in the ocean for example the water itself is uh, we have no it, it, there is no color it's transparent but because of the uh, refraction the water looks green or sometimes blue So I just mentioned this mine vein is renowned for uh, abundant mineral resources. And now in the world, we have 140 kinds of minerals. And in this vein alone, uh, over 86 kinds of uh, a mineral have already been found here, and it has an amount than 26 are rare metals. So, uh, uh, what we, what we do we use for this uh, this this rare metals? Uh, I can give you an example. You know, among the, the resources here, we have the uh, mineral called beryllium. Beryllium. Um, it is used for uh, China's atomic bomb, China's hydrogen bomb, and China's satellite. So, uh, you know, in China, back in 
64, China's uh, first atomic bomb uh, detonated. And then three years later, in 1967, China's first hydrogen bomb also success successfully detonated. And then in 1970, China successfully launched its first man-made uh, satellite. And all the rare metals used on these bombs, on these satellites, all came from this metal. And I also mentioned that this place uh, despite it's uh, it's September here, but uh, it's uh, it starts getting cold because this area is the second coldest place in China. For example, in winter, the, the lowest price could be 50 degrees Celsius below zero. So my cameraman, let's take a look. Our colleagues are preparing for the live show, so I cannot talk too loud. <laughs> He's preparing for a live coverage for our TV program starts at 4 GMT, or 12 Beijing time. And the special segment will start soon. <laughs> and as I just mentioned, this trip, the uh, amazing Xinjiang trip, is a special coverage initiated by CGTN. You start soon? Five minutes. So you have time to talk? Not really, <laughs> but I would love to, but maybe next time. But because the show is, is about to start in five minutes, we have to get ready for this. But okay. still, really appreciate you go all the way from there <laughs> to here. Yeah, it's yeah, a really long journey to, to go. To <laughs> yes. okay. okay. Later, you would talk to our guests, right? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. The okay. third and the second generation the of the people. The first and the second generation mm -hmm. of the people who used to work here. Okay. They have so many stories to tell about Koptoke or Vane. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just stay tuned on our CGTN live show and, 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 and our TV program. And... You should not miss it. Okay, okay. okay. Looking forward to your show. Okay. okay. I will stand here so that I will not disturb you, okay? <laughs> and the colleagues here is, they're just a part of the uh, reporting crew. And uh, uh, actually this time we have about uh, 100 people. Uh, separates in different batches, different groups. We're doing this live stream. Today is the first day. So uh, we will drive uh, through North Xinjiang down to the south. And we will take the whole trip will take one month. And it will cover a total of 8,000 kilometers. So we will see different landscapes of Xinjiang. We will meet different people of different ethnic minorities. And also we, we, uh, we will have different, um, uh, like we will taste different cuisines or... My cameraman reminds me that they're going to start. So maybe we have to leave. But wait a minute, they're going to go to that side. So we have to go first. Okay. I'll leave this place for my colleagues and I will leave them. Let me ask my cameraman. We should Ew. 
。OK， I'm discussing， I'm discussing my route with my cameraman。我应该往那边走吗？对对对，因为他眼睛在那边就穿帮了，他倒一。哦，他他是这样。哦 ，OK，OK。你得在那边稍远。OK, okay.。Okay. Our live coverage, uh, of our TV program will start soon in minutes, and later, we'll also, uh, bring you the live signal of the TV. So, I just introduced a little bit, a little part of about this mining way, and later, for more of this. My vein tumble will bring you more introduction, and they will also have guests、uh, interview with the guests with the the people who people who used to work here. I don't know if I can pick some stones or rocks. <laughs> I don't know. As I just mentioned, this place, you know, this little town,、uh, is called Koto Koktoke, and it used to be a,、uh, the mining industry used to be its pillar industry, but now.、Uh, Is it's working on transformation? Transform. Hey, what's this? My cameraman reminds me that we have some some rock. It's uh, uh, it's white, and it's uh, I think it's semi-transparent, but I don't know what it is. 我能把它塞兜里吗 Can I take it? <laughs> I don't know. This is the white one, and we also have the the green one, something like this. Something like this, you know. I don't know what's this, but you know, I I I mentioned some rare metals used for China's hydrogen bombs. Something called beryllium. I know that beryllium in the the mining stone it looks green, but I don't know whether it is like this. But, but I think the at least the color is similar. Okay, I think I should leave the stones and rocks here. <laughs> This place now is a geo park. What? <laughs> My colleague Xu Zhaoqun, Xu Zhaoqun says he wants this. You want this stone back? No, you can't. <laughs> you need that white one. Okay, I. I'll bring it to the after you later, okay? But promise me you won't take it away. <laughs> okay, time for our time for our TV segment. Hello and welcome to CGTN special program of Amazing Xinjiang. In the following few weeks, we are going to find out what has turned Xinjiang into a place of diversity and inclusiveness, as well as how are the people from various ethnic minorities actually doing. Our journey starts from Northern Xinjiang, where we are going to see how Xinjiang production and construction core has affected the local urbanization. And also, how green tourism has managed to take more and more tourists from around the globe to visit the region, and what ethnic fusion means for regional prosper and stability. And our first stop is right here at Koktoke National Geo Park. It is home to a rare metal deposit that has played a very important role in the development of China's nuclear and aerospace industries. We follow two retired miners of the ore who reflect on their memories and work. This is the number three ore vein of Koktoke. Eighty-year-old retired miner Ai Daihan is showing me around the place he used to work. 
He's from the first generation of people to work at the mine. The number three ore vein is a world-class rare metal deposit, abound with 86 minerals. Its beryllium reserves rank first in the world. The ore vein was discovered in 1930 and was jointly mined by China and the former Soviet Union in the mid-1950s. The pit was closed in the late 1990s after reaching its limit. Now the ore van is part of Koktoke National Geopark. Memories of the past come back to I Daihan every time he visits the site. Sixty-year-old retired miner Bahad Bieg was part of the second generation to work at the mine. He collected over 2,000 objects related to the ore vein over a period of three decades. And he donated all of them to the exhibition hall of Koktoke after retirement. Rare metals from the ore vein were used to pay 47% of the national debt to the former Soviet Union in the 1960s. It also contributed to China's development of the atomic and hydrogen bombs, not to mention the aerospace and military industries. Due to national security concerns, Koktoke used to be a top secret. It's a sentiment echoed by I Daihan. I Daihan takes me to see an old wooden bridge in the town. It used to be the only way out from the mine and was renovated in 2018. I Daihan says the bridge has witnessed the rise of Koktoke, bearing its history and glory. So he wrote a song for the bridge and the town. Now we have with us I Dad Han, uh, who was in my story, and he's right here with us again. Uh, he's going to hear, to be here, share with us a little bit more about those good old memories of the place that he used to work. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel every time when you come back here, visiting the place that you used to work 40 years ago? He said that 40 years ago he was a kid. Uh, he didn't know anything about this place. Okay, uh, he didn't even know that the, the stone that he picked is like or maybe diamond or something really precious. And after the launch of the program of the nuclear bombs and hydrogen bombs, then he realized that the work that he did was very valuable and very important for the country's development. His efforts was not in vain. It's the efforts and the project that he and his colleagues did for the country's development. Um, how was it like back then? Uh, 
，那个是一个树林，嗯，树林的一方，天时。特别这个不是这个这这样子，那个村儿嘛，树林这个气候冷了，这个地方下雪。Mm. So、he said that that the working environment here was、mm. was not that good back then. There were so many trees, but here it was、um, really harsh working environment. 嗯，我们的那个都是工作的那个肩膊是那个小娃娃，都是娃娃。Oh, and、yeah. most of the workers there at that at that time, or forty years ago, were kids. 都是那个厂房里头。肩膊是。Okay, they they work here for so many times and have to deal with those harsh working environment and harsh weather. And what was the most difficult part of the of the work and life here back then? 当时最艰苦的部分是什么？能跟我们说一下吗？那个是这当时的啊，当时的最艰苦是这个地方，就是特别是这个那个六零年这个时间嘛。一个这个那个时候，三年灾害，那个生活方面有一困难，那个吃的方面嘛，就是吃饱饿。The most difficult part、uh, was back in 1960s that、yeah. they have to go through like like always get very starving,、uh, and they didn't have much to eat. 工作感觉十二个小时。It was difficult,、uh, very difficult, but they had to conquer all those. Difficulties and you know still work hard at that moment. Uh, just just this 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 time. Okay, I I I know that you sing a song. You sang a song in the story, and do you mind singing it again right here on site for us? I know you sang a song in the story, and do you mind singing it again right here on site for us? I know you sang a song in the story, and do you mind singing it again right here on site for us? 可以说吗？ Yes, yes, 嗯，笑。阿拉伯人，我呀很大一点个个，土拉比尔的啥个叫同款特别的？啊，乌日边天，门个绿树把岸，日子过得马路是拉的，可怜的。Thank you, thank you very much. 谢谢您啊，大爷。Thank you for joining us. 感谢您来参加我们的节目。谢谢您啊。Okay, thank you very much. Now, for decades, the rare metals from Cock to K. Or then supported China's scientific progress and national defense, but it wasn't just miners that contributed to the efforts. CGTN's Zhao Yunfei takes us to a secret hydro hydropower station that once played a crucial role in the mine's day-to-day -day operation. A mysterious site in China's far western lands of Xinjiang, driving through the mountains then downwards. Cheng Shoujun takes us to a plant that's been running for decades, but remains largely unknown to the outside world. The elevator ride is two minutes and ten seconds, while traveling downwards at the speed of one meter per second. The total depth is more than 130 meters, and it could be the longest distance between two floors in China. For Cheng, the facilities at the station are more than familiar. But when he began his career here 30 years ago, the underground plant was a top secret. It provided electricity for mining projects at a crater 10 kilometers away. The pit was known for its abundance of rare metals, sourced in the 1960s for China's development of the atom and hydrogen bombs. Mining has been suspended, but the miners' stories of past times continue to inspire those at Kukuto High. We should keep on learning. All our operations need to be precise. We should foster more young people and give them more opportunities. Once they grow up, they can then pass on their knowledge to more people. Chang says the spirit of Kukuto High is kept alive by remembering the legacy of past generations. I work for the electricity industry. We work for the electricity industry. We provide light to others. My family and the community benefit from our work. It's a very rewarding job. Today, generators are still spinning. The hydroelectric station is still providing power to the towns nearby. It no longer has a national security function, but the plant is still here, a memory of generations and beyond. Zhao Yunfei, CGTN, 
Kokotohai, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Now again, we have with us at, on site uh, Bud Beck, who is the second generation of people who used to work at the ore van. Thank you very much for joining us. I want to know that you have made those collections over the past 30 years. Why did you do that? He said that he made all those collections in order to let more and more people to try to get to know uh, about the history of Kotto K. Um, what is the most precious object among those collections? He says that the most simplest tools, like hammers, uh, are the most precious object among his collections because those hammers, those gears, made this place from nothing to the, the contribution of the country's nuclear and aerospace development. Thank you very much for your participation. Um, you know, both R. Daihan and Bartbeek have strong feelings about Cocteau K, a combination of gratitude and pride. Cocteau K changed their lives, and they are proud that they were part of the town's contribution to the country's development. And that's all for today's live. We'll soon head to our next stop, Beituan, a city that has built by Xinjiang's production and construction core. Stay tuned on our special program of Amazing Xinjiang. Bye for now.